Uh, hey, what's going on, y'all? Jimmy Malcolm. I said I would continue with Red Dead. I'm sorry these are so infrequent. It feels like I'm saying that every single time I post something. But trust me, I am doing this absolutely as often as I can, which is not very often. Sorry. Let's get to it. Excuse me, Mr. Marston. Have you seen my father anywhere? No. He went out this morning to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. Uh-oh. Well, the ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they've found nothing. Come on, let's go look for him. John's a good dude. I mean... Mr. Marston, I'm sure it's nothing, but I worry about the old fool. Come on, boy. Out of the murdering and the killing and things like I've that. I've got a bad feeling about this. It's not like him to be away for so long. No worry. We'll find him. He's not as young as he used to be. What if he's hurt himself? Your father can still handle himself just fine, Miss McFarland. He feel like an oak. You're probably right. But I can't help worrying. He's all I've got. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers. But five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the East and never came back. Must be getting on for ten years ago now. Jesus. He's a high and mighty banker in New York, according to his last letter. He should be here, helping you and your Paul. I don't want his help. He can live his life any way he wants. True. When I see those city fellers coming in on the railway, all dressed up like a sore toe, I fear a little for his soul. He switched his saddle for a tie. That's fine. I just never met a man in a tie I can trust. Fair enough. Who's that over there? Where? Yeah! What was she seeing? I'm so shit. Oh! Daddy, what oh. happened? Nothing nice. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe they didn't bother twins that much. And you head back to the ranch right now and fetch the wagon. Yes, sir. Marcy, watch after her. I'll do that, sir. Oh shit, we're gonna get accosted on our way back. What could have happened to those poor men? And the horses were dead too. I think we should get back there as soon as we can. Who could have done something like that? Your boss seemed to have an idea who it was. Let's just do what he says and get the wagon. Those damn rustlers! I've got a good mind to head over to Pike's face and myself. I don't think that's a good idea. At all. And you're no better. How many men have you killed? Do you really want to know? It's disgusting. You never met the men I killed. I heard the way you talked about that gang you were in. Like there was some twisted morality to what you did. I know I have a code. Only some of us don't realize The outlaw it. with the code? How wonderfully romantic. The reluctant murderer, the noble criminal. There's nothing more depressing than a man who's found a way to think the bad into good. You're upset. Look, Mr. Marston, the barn is on fire. Oh, shit. She made a pretty good point there, but uh. Oh, oh there! Somebody get them horses out! Oh, oh. oh. How's that work? I don't know what though. There's no way in for the front. Help me, will you? Mr. Marston, please see if you, you can get in through this one.
goddamn right. Now what? Oh shit. To this question mark because you guys told me to talk to him. Apparently, this is the best part of the game. It's the question marks. The best part of the game should be the game. Main mission. Always. Say, what's that stick you got there? Oh, y'all ain't never seen a dowsing rod before, mister? Never seen a man summon the water up from the bare earth? Uh, mister, uh... Barston. Ah. Folks, no. stop. It's that green thing up there. It's the water you're looking for. What's wrong with that lake over there? Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with Lake Don Julio. Nothing wrong with it, but we lack the fancy irrigation equipment you folks have back east. Man needs a wellspring on his proper tile to ranch here. Makes sense. Yeah. Why, you know, just last week, I was over at Old Pleasant's house. And I think I may have found something, but old coot that owns the place threatened to call the law down on me, so. People act funny around strange men with sticks. They sure do. Damn fools. Bet you he don't even know how much water's running underneath his proper tile. You want me to tell him? <laughs> you know what? You ain't that stupid, mister. And I can tell. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go get the old man to sell us his proper top for a small pittance, and I can find the source of the water, build us a proper wellspring. Maybe I will. Well, all right then. <laughs> what do I see out of this? I'm just doing good deeds? Oh, John. What'd you just say? I will shoot him dead right here now. Can I? I'm not sure if I can. But 
fuck that, I'm not doing this thing. Just talking shit. Fuck you. You don't or not? Excuse you, motherfucker? I just haven't do you a favor, and now you're rushing me? Alright, cops. Everything's so far away. I feel like things were closer in Red Dead. I don't know why. I mean, the second one. I'm sorry. I'm just not used to it. This lady with the baby, who I did want to talk to. Since I fucked her up last time by accident. Right? Oh, they took my boy! My boy! Who did? He's missing. He's only a youngster. My boy is missing. We heard you. Who took him? Where? Who took him? Them people in the hills. Them hills near Hanging Rock. They took him. Can't the police force help you? No. They can't even help themselves. Please, sir. My son is missing. I need your help. If I find him, I'll bring him back to you. Alright. Shut up. Oh, you people rush me when I'm doing them favors. Shot, but I know where it's coming from. I don't want to get off my horse, but I'm not going to just yet. Shit, that's not good. that he's missing a shoe. Uh, no? We're done? Really? That's it? Alright. Back to the marshal. Alright, let's not die. Oh shit, I'm back. I stink in this game. Where's Red Dead 2? <laughs> I don't have a clue. Alright, well, it's gotta be something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him, find out what he knows. Fuck it is. Where is she, Marston? Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum! Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? She hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child now. Drew, nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall, come out, come out, wherever you are. Shit, I got Bonnie. Hey, buddy. Fucking cocksucker. Even better. Good day, Mr. McFarland. Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. Not if Drew McFarland wants to see his Bonnie back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarland. This is a nice girl you got there. Get out from there. You know, part of me's got the thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby in that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you get your daughter back, mister. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do! 
Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Old government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas. Or I will slit that horse throat myself. You boys have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah! What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. Fuck that! Please do. I mean, I'm gonna get Bonnie back. I'm not being nice to this asshole. Call me scum for no reason. Saved your stupid place how many times, you fucking cocksucker? I'll teach you some respect for the law. Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Quick as you can, deputy. Make sure he's tied on good. Stay with me, Marston. I won't let anything happen to him, sir. We gotta save Bonnie, though. They kill Bonnie. Come on. I might not make it through this Come game. Come on, let's ride hard to Tumbleweed. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is who sent you. They made me come here. They gave me no choice. That's your federal government, Mr. Johnson. They come down here dressed as cocky as the king of diamonds, talking a lot of flannel about helping us, about spreading peace and civilization in the West, but they brought nothing but trouble and taxes. I agree with you. Wolves in cheap clothing, all of them, rob you, and make you pay to have someone investigate the crime on your behalf. People around here have been fooled into feeling protected when they're worse off than they were before. Fellas I know don't care about people. All they care about is lining their pockets. Why is this sorry son of a bitch so important to them? Norman Deke, Williamson, right hand man. In other words, a glorified errand you boy. Wait, Marshal! I'll be back for you! Bill Standards is slip! <laughs> He's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid to ever be a leader. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. You know, Sounds like Bill. Say, they'd best not have laid a finger on this before. What is this place for him? Tumbleweed? A lonely godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed. And that was that. Pretty soon everybody had up and left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like me here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarland, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I can ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable in different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. I know you helped. Just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. Yes. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and the past. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubts. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business neither. Sounds a great How is this mess supposed to turn out? Sending an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules, but they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyway, just to spite me. If I punish him, he resists me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, at least he has reason not to do it again. That's nonsense. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. You look at Deke here. Man has worked hard at civilization. Your boy steps out of line, you whack him. He does it again, whack him harder. You're a good man, Marshal. And I respect what you're trying to do. But what I've seen since I've arrived here, the law ain't really working. Criminals are like weeds, Marston. Weeks you stomp one out, another one sprouts up in its place. Oh, slow down, please! Oh, God damn it! I ain't no use to you dead! Look at this random horse hanging out with us. You think you're a man, do you? Come on, boys! Over the bridge! 
exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. Bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a poor employee. Here goes Ranger Girl Viking. Maybe she won't want to go home, but she can't fuck so good. Come on now, boys, cut it in. We're fun. Let's all be happy. Well, you're not wrong. You'll make me look at Shoot the rubble like a gangster, it didn't work. Bonnie, are you okay? I found out, Mr. Morris. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. What the hell took you so long? Stupid man. You weren't exactly helping me. You think I'm gonna lower myself? Well, they did a joke about being all tied up. We got another thing coming. Come on. <laughs> no thank you, no nothing, alright? I did kill somebody, but it was an accident, I swear. Now the rest of them that were around, I did kill them on purpose. Because, you know, they try to kill me if they fucking stay. Those cocksuckers were gonna kill Bonnie. You, you believe that? The show, let's go. What happens? What happens to all of us? I reckon we'll find an odd fellow friend. Yeah. That's where he'd be, I guess. Can't wait to know the monster. Yeah. Can't 
And I can tell you, with no uncertainty, that miracle killers are no laughing matter. I bid you a good day, sir. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How are you keeping? Um, well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Sheet, London, New Haven, New York, and a little of New Austin. At my service. At my service. At everyone's service, yeah, the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are you wounds? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh, well, That's the guy that saved your life, stupid. They would be. Would be. I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Tosche. Ah, uh, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, I do, you, sir. I do a bulk discount rate of 195 an ounce. It's only about 100 ounces or more. That's a lot of immortality. Uh, give it up, old man. Yes, Mr. West Dickens, to you, boy. Give it up, old man. Listen, Master, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. What the... Come along, and let's ride over to my newest customer at Bridgewood, and I'll explain why. Okay. <laughs> I heard about you, Mr. West Dickens. And I about you, John Marston. Good week in the week. Gullible out of their hard earned money? My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, and I may be so bold, for heeding such an ill informed. To be fair, I'm as full of wind as a horse with a cub. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands. I was say, to be fair, we've done a lot worse. I know some four of the second game you didn't was after the so second game, but before the second game, but still. Straight up for progress, John. Personal. Knowledge makes a fool into a doubting Thomas. It's the cross I bear as a pioneer in the fields of commerce and medical research. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine battle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing fellow than has never been. And so shall you, a fair Iago or Cassio make. I don't like the sound of this. Showmanship, John. The flourish, the bow. Operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God given talents to our advantage. I'm only going to kill I'm really starting to regret I'll this. I'll drop you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the crowd of surety for me. Eventually, I'll be up to try my time. After extolling the merchants, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the king. Such as shooting. Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. So it is all a shit. <laughs> no, no, just a little innocent ballyhoo to 
grease the wheels of enterprise, that's all. Do you think that buxom young girl you see on the Voyage camera posters knows the first thing about photography? Advertising, my boy, is the future. You'd best be a man of your word. Swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> but can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who can prove the qualities of its mind. <laughs> can you think right now? You, sir, come up here. Step right up. That's the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Jesus, no, he reminds me of fucking, um, well, Trelawney. I was trying to think, yeah, a little faith bit. Can move up, his but his I grandfather. Faith, I am a man of science, and today, science will be vindicated. Not the voice, but wordy and completely full of Your shit. Your eyesight is greatly improved. Is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. I'm Go ahead, shooting friend. it, I assume. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. Okay. Where is it? Shit, I can't see. Oh, there it is. Shoot it now, my friend, while the elixir is at its strongest. That it right there? Wait, he is still adjusting to his powerful new eyes. Try again, friend. The tonic may still be taking I hold. Saw, I can't even see what I'm shooting at. I can shoot better than that with my eyes closed. On the porch of the house. Oh, there it is. I see it. it took me a minute. I'll shoot you way the fuck over there. Remarkable! The eyesight of an eagle. Granted by imbibing Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eyes so damn sharp, why don't you try to shoot my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. This guy's right, too. We just fucked right. up. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. 
Here it comes. Go, bitch. Get your weapon at the ready. All right, go ahead. I thought we was here to be here. Chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, uh, wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks bearing gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. What the fuck? I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. He's a most often found at Cook's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! <laughs> to be fair... He's a piece of garbage, but this is not a bad hustle. John's a badass, right? Of his own upbringing and skills and whatever. So he just stands because of this. It's brilliant. It's fucked up. Admittedly, when it doesn't work for everybody, but still. Anyway, post your comments down below. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs>